Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today I want to talk about resolution requirements. We've got, you know, I'm big on accumulating data. So for the last, I don't know, 14 years or so, I start to see trends in what people look at and what they purchase products for and how they do it and what they go after first. Sometimes following my advice, sometimes not doesn't make any difference. So we're trying to, the hardest part for people in acoustics is to realize that, geez, I got to spend 10, 15, $20,000 on a room. Now, I don't mind spending that on speakers and I probably don't mind spending it on amplifiers and DACs and cables and things like that. <laughs> but you need to shift that paradigm and start thinking about the room as an instrument, as a gear, as a speaker, as an amplifier. It's all of those things. So I get it. You got to have the gear for first to generate the sound or the music and, and then it goes into the room. But the balance then is treating the room. Okay. So everybody kind of understands that's got to be done. They really don't understand what they're going to get. So I've tried to take the three main areas that I see in all of our data from our room forums. You know, I talk to 30, 40 people a day on the phone. So I, I keep track of, you know, what their situation is. And that's why we ask a lot of questions on the room forum, because it helps us narrow things down and focus. Helps communication and not wasting time. There's so many people that just waste time. I, I don't understand it. But we got to get that variable out of the equation. We have to have communication right away. So we got to quantify and qualify it. Resolution is the minimization of spatial irregularities. This is a spatial ir irregularity. This is a response curve. That's a spatial irregularity. That's a spatial you know, because we're, we're going for something like that. So these are irregular shapes to that. So spatial irregularity, okay? So we're going to minimize those. We're going to push on those. We're going to fill those in. So we want to smooth the response curve out. Now, there's two frequency ranges that we found in all the rooms we built, 300 and some rooms, those two frequency ranges. In almost every room, I think 97% of the rooms in the database. So it's pretty safe to say that's statistically significant. So these are the two areas we focused on with our ACD series. The 30 to 50 is the 12. The 30 to 300 is the ACD A10. Now they go higher because there's foam on the face, but those are separate. It does two things in one product, but for purposes of this, we want to stay in the low frequency. So we focus on this fundamental because of the harmonics. If we're going to go after this. We know this impacts this. So we push this down. This starts to fill in. This is physics. Okay, so we got to be careful. So we want to really go after that 30 to 50, and that's the ACDA 12. Look up the performance on the website. It's the most powerful per square foot low frequency absorber ever created, bar none. Send me a link to somebody who performs better. There isn't any, okay? 30 to 300 is in every room too, but it's really 50 to 300 because we manage 30 to 50 with the 12. So now we got a more broadband approach. We don't need a big horsepower unit here. We need more broadband, more linearity when treating these because you don't want to over treat, you know, 100 to 300. You just don't want to do that. It's present in too many harmonics in first order, second and third order harmonics. You don't want to mess with that too much. So broadband absorption there. So three categories I came up with. Probably don't care for the names, but it's the best way I could come up with to kind of figure out three different classifications. Hobbyist, guy just starting out, okay? Less than five years listening to channel and probably just mixing for himself, not generating revenue. <coughs> Excuse me. So less than five years, has a room, 
live, I worked in it uh, long enough and listened to it long enough that you realize that, wow, I got to do some treatment. <clears throat> All right. So then we have mix and listener. The mix guy, he could be more than five years, semi-pro, maybe making a little bit of money. We see that in a large percentage of the cases. You know, he, his goal is to get to professional. His goal is to take a hobby and make it a profession. So he's in that transition area. Semi-pro, I guess you could say. Greater than five years, uh, listening, ten, five to ten years. You want to stay in those time frames. This is what we see. And then the master. Well, we all know what master engineers do. Listing, you know, greater than 10 years. We find that people that build their own dedicated rooms, that have budget and want to treat all the issues or, or as many as issues as they have space and budget to treat, that these are the guys that, you know, they have been in the business, so to speak, listening and, and working. And now they finally want their own room. So... And then there's things that go with that too. And we just did a video on that. The two things that happen with that is regret and determination. Regret they didn't do it sooner. Now they're 60, 65, and they should have did it earlier because they enjoy it so much. And the determination is they'll never, uh, they'll never be without it again. That I can assure you. Because I've tried to buy some of our units back from clients that have them because we get caught sometimes in production problems and clients' needs. And I try to buy units from our clients. That got, I know people that have 20, 30, 40 ACDAs in their studios. They won't sell them. Even if I buy them back at full retail plus, they won't. They won't sell them to me because they're too much of a tool in their business already. They're not going to be without it. I understand. So, but that give you an idea. We never, you know, have um, anything returned or anything like that. People always buy more, so it works out pretty good for, for everyone. So I hope this gives you some idea of what I'm trying to do here. And you can see it on the room form. When you fill out the room form, you're going to start to see these categories. And there's the cost. You can see the cost. 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 and up for mastery. So you can get an idea, you can pick the resolution, and you can look at the cost, okay? And that's the goal. So you can get a good feeling for it. Now, all it is is working around less problems, right? That's how you get resolution. So the hobbyist, he's going to have to work around 30 to 40%. The mixed listener combination, you know, 20 to 30, and the mastering engineer, 10%. So it's minimizing the amount of problems that you have to work around. Of course, a mastering engineer, he, he doesn't want to work around anything. Well, it's hard to get a perfect room. You're always going to have about 10% issues in a mastering room, and they're always in the low end, always. So, but the main thing is he, he's, he knows it. So it's predictable and consistent, and he can you know, apply that knowledge to his mixes, and they'll translate. The more distortion you have and the more things you have to work around, we know that it zaps your creative ability. You spend more time working around than you do creating, and you can't have that. You gotta be careful with that balance. So what are we trying to do? The elimination or minimization of frequency workarounds and listening arounds, workarounds. So this is my attempt. I hope it helps with some understanding here, but this is what you got to spend. This is what 14 years of our data shows you if you want to achieve these resolutions. And if you compare the cost with gear and speakers and stuff like that, it's right in that range. So, you know, an amplifier or speaker can be 10, 15, 20,000 sometimes. And that's what treatment ranges are. So uh, look at Look on our website, look at the cost of everything, go to the room form and you can see that. And we've done some videos on it. So that'll give you a feel. Now, you may not be able to do it all at once. I get it. Stage it. And we could, once we get you in one of these three groups, I can then look at your room size and figure out what we have to do in a phase one. I guarantee you, once you get phase one in, you'll immediately know what phase two will be. 
Because once you get a new reference in the room, as powerful as our technology is, you'll become the engineer. You won't even need me. You'll hear what it does to that wall. And you go, well, I need it done here too, because you'll hear it. Right now, you, you might not be able to hear anything. You might be able to hear frequency and amplitude, but you don't know location. So those are all things that you can do to improve resolution. So resolution requirements, hobbyist, mix and master. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. So please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis. So that'll help you. Thank you.